Hey, what's up, guys? So, in this video, Star Wars Theory, the GOAT, he finds out, I, I guess during one of his live watch parties for Kenobi, he finds out that the lead writer didn't know that Obi-Wan knew that Anakin was Vader. <laughs> so this show, I've, I've, once again, I've had a lot of issues with this show. Give me episodes one and three, and that's really all I needed. You could have ended the show there and I'd have been okay with it. I'm, I'm not happy with the show overall. But let's, let's take a look at uh, Theory's reaction to finding this out. So this article where it said the writer hasn't watched Revenge of the Sith or something like that about Kenobi not knowing Anakin was Darth Vader. What? I don't believe that. I'm going to search that right now. What, Kenobi, writer, Revenge of the Sith. No way. Let's go to news. What? Dude, no way. Hold on. Hold on. He's going to have a meltdown. There is no way. Obi-Wan Kenobi writer appears to be appears to be oblivious of Revenge of the Sith, has no clue Kenobi knew Anakin was Darth Vader. Wait, okay, wait, what are the... Is this... Is this are they capping? <laughs> um, speaking with the rap, Harold revealed he didn't originally pitch Kenobi, not knowing that Darth Vader survived their battle. What? He said, that was actually not something I pitched originally. That was something I discovered along the way. And sort of had to confirm with Pablo Hidalgo and really think, hold on a second, what does he actually know? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me get, hold on. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have a meltdown life. This is, uh. We're gonna have a meltdown. Um, speaking with the rap, I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring you guys up. I want to see what the hell you guys are saying, too. This doesn't make any sense. Um. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. You hire somebody that doesn't know anything about the story to write the story. I'm very confused at this moment, okay? Um, he said... That was actually not something I pitched originally. What was not something? That he didn't know Kenobi. He didn't originally pitch Kenobi not knowing that Vader survived their battle. What? How is that possible? Like, like I, don't, I don't get it. He didn't know Obi-Wan knew that Vader survived their battle. Okay, well, yeah, he doesn't know for several years and then he knows. I don't know, I don't that was actually not something I pitched originally. This was something I discovered along the way and sort of had to confirm with Pablo Hidalgo and really think, hold on a second, what does he actually know? Is there more to this story? This oh, there is. Sense. This makes no sense. From there, Harold listed off a string of questions with one of them implying he and the team at Lucasfilm working on this show did not realize that Obi-Wan Kenobi knows that... He questioned, does he know the moniker Vader? What would that mean? Can he associate the two? What was he cognizant of? How isolated is he? Where is Vader at that time? Where's his reputation and how well known is he? And all of those pieces of the puzzle. He's pissed. Nevertheless, Harold would go on to explain why he wanted Kenobi to discover that Vader was still alive. Okay, well, okay. Well, I don't see a problem with that. If he's writing that Kenobi doesn't know that Vader's alive, well, there was a bit that he didn't know. That's totally fine. The great piece of storytelling you can use is getting you into play the moment of realization 
that that which haunts him is still alive. And what does that mean for him? There were many avenues that I could take him down, all of which hopefully are good opportunities to tease our story as we continue, but it all comes down to... What it all comes down to... Is it viable within canon to play that card, which it was? Yeah, but 10 years after is a little ridiculous. Which is great because that allows you at the end of Episode 2 and the beginning of Episode 3. Gets you so much that feels essential to the fundamental story, which is Obi-Wan, Vader. That which haunts you, facing the past, everything that comes to fruition in 3 and beyond, he continued. It was a good day when we realized we could use it and do it. What do you mean you realized? Had this guy even seen Revenge of the Sith? This is so... I'm so... Lucasfilm, what the absolute F are you guys... Do? Who are you hiring for this stuff? Like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? Who are you hiring for the guy who doesn't even know anything? And he's writing Kenobi? Like, what is this, bro? You gotta double check with Pablo Hidalgo and stuff? I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna lose... My actual freaking mind. I'm going to throw my goddamn monitor into the wall because I'm so fed up with this goddamn stupidness. It doesn't make any sense. Which is great because that allows you at the end of episode 2 and the beginning of episode 3, blah, blah, blah. It was a good day when we realized we could use it and do it. Like... It made the story active, especially for the viewer that isn't a familiar with canon as 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 we all are. Bro, is this guy like smoking the reefer? Like, it was a good day when we realized we could use it and do it. It made the story active, especially for the viewer that isn't as a fi as familiar with canon as we all are. Brody just freaking admitted that he didn't even know anything. Like, I'm. Even the suggestion that Kenobi didn't know Vader was... I was going to say, like, did this guy never watch the original trilogy? Did he not watch Revenge of the Sith? The other he spoke of is your sister. Jesus Christ. Ironically, Harold was, would also praise the idea of Star Wars canon being locked down despite throwing it out the window in every single episode of his Obi-Wan show to date. He stated... <laughs> the spectacular thing about Star Wars versus some of the other big franchisee IP stuff. Yeah, it's great to lump it all in one. Uh, I've been lucky enough to work on it. Is everything so buttoned up in regards to canon? And yet yeah, so buttoned up that they hire someone who doesn't even know the goddamn movies. In regards to canon and the things you can do and the things you can't do very, very quickly, you find out what's on the table and what isn't. Everything's an email or a phone call away. But why is it an email or a phone call away when you're the one writing it? Like, are you just making shit up at the top of your head when you're writing stuff? And then you got to call in and be like, hey, can, can Kenobi use a banana peel as a lightsaber? Is that okay? Maybe not. Like... I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry for my, my attitude. Um, I got to check myself a little bit, but like, this is the first time that I'm hearing this. And I, I, I didn't know anything about the gentleman writing. I figured it was someone that is obviously, obviously very akin, very, very knowledgeable about the story of Anakin and Obi-Wan and Vader and has, you know, I've been a huge fan of the first six films and knows them back and front. What the hell is this? I have no idea what he's doing. They just hired a writer. You sort of have a big idea and you say, hey, can I do this? And someone goes, no. And you go, okay, fine. Oh, so literally what I just made fun of. Or they say, yeah, you're allowed to do that. And then we canoodle and see if it bears fruit. This makes me want to do Vader Episode 2 so much faster, man. Like... You know, oh my god, dude. Like, I am... 
I am so embarrassed right now to even be acting this way right now on my live stream. Like, I wish, I wish I was recording this because I could just like cut all of this and edit it all out and be composed and you guys wouldn't even be the wiser. Pablo is the sort of mad genius, and he was incredibly helpful and always available. And I'll be forever grateful for his help because you can hunt any idea if he can say, yeah, if you want, you're okay there, he concluded. Well, thank the maker for Pablo. Just a handful of canon-breaking aspects to the show are the fact that Bail Organa has a direct line to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine. This completely makes Princess Leia placing the Death Star plans in R2-D2 and asking him with, and tasking him with finding Obi-Wan Kenobi and getting them to the Rebel Alliance null and void. In the show's second episode, Kenobi actually rest... Well, you get it. I mean, it's ridiculous. First of all, the, the fact that even the show had it to the point where... Um, Obi-Wan had no idea that Vader was still alive. I mean, is that you not have a TV? Uh, Darth Vader is literally like the, probably the most known person in the entire galaxy at this point. Uh, I mean, he's wearing a suit of armor. Uh, he's the face of the Empire. That's ridiculous uh, already that they implement that into the show. He should have had some idea at, by this point. Should have been told that by Reva 10 years later that Darth Vader is still alive out there. It doesn't make any sense. But that was absolutely hilarious. They hired a writer that had no idea what the hell he was doing. And it shows in the show. Um, so, yeah, it's just more disappointment from Disney's Star Wars. Hopefully the last episode is really good. Um, yeah, uh, like this video if you liked it. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. What do you think about this, uh, this reaction from Theory? Um, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.